Hello and welcome to my part 17 of my 2024 F1 season simulation. If you missed part 16, it was the Monza Grand Prix or the Italian Grand Prix. Make sure to check that one out before watching this video as we had a race at Ferrari's home, which was very, very Italian, uh, let's say like that. Anyway, so let's get into the round 17, Azerbaijan Grand Prix. No rain expected for the entire weekend once again. I mean, there's some... There's some forecast for Singapore though, so we should be excited for that. Um, in terms of upgrades, there's not much uh, to say here other than a couple of upgrades uh, to their car by a couple of teams, but that's that's about it. Not, nothing big, big there. It's the end of the season and only a couple of teams are expecting any big upgrades from their factories. And a lot of the teams already are focusing on next, next season, uh, especially from the top teams. Uh, when it comes to Q1, uh, it's gonna be the backing order is gonna be better similar to Monza. Uh, let's say like that, as this, the straight line speed is a huge factor here. But the slow speed corners are also a huge factor and may differ from Monza. Uh, technically, uh, well, you see, as in Q1, we have Ferrari one two so far provisionally. Uh, Science head of Leclerc, Max. Russell, Alonso, Hamilton, Perez, Gasly, PS3, and Stroll in P10, and Sunoda, Norris, Ocon, Sargent, and Albon. And then, provisionally knocked out in Q1 are Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Bottas, Ricardo, and Joe. Ricardo and Joe, unfortunately, had some reliability issues uh, in Q1, so they're not going to progress into the next qualifying session. Very unfortunate for them. Uh, they're pretty much set there, so only three drivers are actually getting knocked out in here. So let's see if there are any changes. As we can see, there are no changes. So knocked out in Q1 are the two has so Polkenberg and Magnussen and Valtteri Bottas. Yeah, Alba was very close to getting knocked out and is getting all qualified by, by Sergeant by quite a bit so far. Now uh, let's see if that changes. And Q2, as we have Carl Sainz topping Q2 as well. And then another Ferrari 1 2. So this looks like uh this looks like a very very strong circuit for ferrari so far uh especially for science who's topping the session for second time in a row behind them to two red bulls of max Verstappen and sergio perez then it's alonso then it's mclaren so Paris, and ps3 then it's Sunoda, russell ocon and a big shock hamilton uh provisionally knocked out in q2 in 11th place and in the last stroll pierre gasly ended the two williams cars up album ahead of logan Sargent this time yeah. Wow. Uh, Ferrari looks very, very strong. And I mean, <laughs> Mercedes, they, they don't seem to, they don't seem to find any pace whatsoever uh, in the recent races, uh, especially in these, in these straight line speed based tracks like Monza and Baku are. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, for Hamilton so far, provisionally getting knocked out. Uh, I mean, the probability of a lead lap time in, in Baku is very low uh, because whenever you exceed track limits, you're basically destroying your car here, right? Um, so yeah, let's not, not get our hopes up. There are no changes for the final classification of Q2. I knocked out in Q2 are Lewis Hamilton, Lance Stroll, Pierre Gasly, uh, Alex Albon, and Logan Sargent. Let's see Q3. Uh, his, yeah, Ferrari looks very, very good. Uh, they seem to carry their form from Monza. As we can see, Charles Leclerc on provisional pole position for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Behind him is Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez in P3. Carlos Sainz only in P4 over three tenths of a second behind Charles. It looks like he couldn't really uh, get that lap together uh, after topping Q1 and Q2, unfortunately, for Sainz. And it's Alonso in P5, Russell in P6. And those gaps are getting really big from the top two teams so far. Obviously, top two teams for this for this circuit specifically. We have Ocon in P7 out qualifying Sunoda and both McLarens. Uh, McLaren is actually having insanely big gaps to the pole position. Norris over seven and a half tenths behind. PS3 even more of the, over nine tenths of a second. Um, good qualifying from Ocon and Sunoda there though. Uh, and technically Russell, who's in the Mercedes, who's what is, which is not very competitive, let's say like that at the moment. Um, yeah, McLaren's, yeah, they look like they could challenge Red Bull and the constructors. And right now, they just face two of their worst 
circuits for their car on the calendar and it doesn't look good in review pretty so far as we can see final classification doesn't change at all Charles Leclerc is on pole position so let's recap the starting grid for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix as we can see Charles Leclerc as I mentioned earlier is lining up a pole position for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix finish Max Verstappen in P2 Behind them is Peko Perez in P3, Sainz in P4, Alonso P5, Russell P6, Ocon P7, Sonoda P8, Norris P9, and Oscar Piastri rounding out the top 10. Then it's Lewis Hamilton in P11, Lance Stroll P12, Gasly P13, Albon P14, Sargent P15, Hulkenberg P16, Magnussen in P17, Bottas P18, Ricardo in P19, and Joe starting that last for this Grand Prix. Yeah, it's Azerbaijan. You don't really know what's going to happen in the race because uh, either you get absolute chaos or just a boring Max Verstappen victory. So, yeah, uh, at the start of the grade, looks like uh, a Max victory could be inside. So, let's see if, uh, if there are any surprises for the race itself. As we see Sergio Perez winning the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of you wouldn't expect this. Max Verstappen comes home in P2. With the fastest lap, and it's George Russell in P3, so no Ferrari on the podium whatsoever. Uh, uh, yeah, before continuing to the rest of the grid, first of the race results, uh, yeah, I would probably should mention what happened in the race because it was chaos. Uh, it was absolute chaos. Just the, the average Baku race from 17, 18, 19, just, just the ra those races where there are a lot of this. Uh, disturbances in the race. Um, first off, we had Lewis Hamilton DNFing, Jutton engine failure, brought out the safety car, shuffled the grid. Then we had Magnussen DNFing from a similar issue, bringing out their virtual safety car. And then towards the end, we had Pierre Gasly uh, putting it into the wall, unfortunately for him, causing a red flag, which shuffled the grid even more. And we just ended up with this craziness of race results. So yeah, uh, mentioned the podium already. Carl Sainz in P4, his Logan Sargent in P5, his best best race finish in his Formula One career. Wow, uh, P6 for Lance Stroll beating Alonso, P7 for Charles Leclerc, the pole sitter. Very unfortunate for him. And Tsunoda in P8, Alonso in P9, and Valtteri Bottas scores a point for the Sauber team, which seems to be the slowest car on the grid right now. Um, in P10, yeah. Two McLarens out of points, just as other points, both of them. Very, very bad weekend for for the McLaren team, uh, as they seem to seem to uh, must look behind them rather than in front of them in the constructors championship. Uh, Albon in P13, Hulkenberg P14, Ocon P15, dropping eight places from his great grid spot. P16 for Guanyu Zhou. Uh, I know it says Bottas, uh, ignore that. It's Guanyu Zhou. Um, sorry for that. Just probably uh, an error that I didn't realize. Ricardo in P17, last of the finishing drivers, and the DNFs are Lewis Hamilton, Kevin Magnussen, and Pierre Gasly. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Logan started at P5. Soon at P8. Bottas P10. Uh, no McLaren points. Uh, wow. This, this is just. If it wasn't for the Red Bull 1 2, probably the craziest race of the simulation so far. Uh, yeah, it was a crazy race, but unfortunately, it ended in the Red Bull 1 2, so not very exciting. And unfortunately, um, at least it was the other Red Bull of Jaco Perez winning, because, yeah, I'm probably very used to winning, uh, seeing Max Verstappen win uh, after those two seasons in real life. Anyways, let's see a look at the race results, how it changed. The Road to our Championship. So we see Max Verstappen leading the way on 278 points in P1. Yeah, this is a comfortable lead, probably uh, getting getting his World Jar Championship, four, fourth World Jar Championship in a row, uh, like three or four weekends before 48 of the season at this pace. Probably maybe even five, which would be around 19 which is the u.s grand prix which is in two races so i mean <laughs> yeah that, that was very exciting in terms of drive championship at least at the top but behind him it's very very close uh lonza in p2 202 points three victories six podiums three poles and two fastest laps tied on points with charles leclerc in p3 202 points three victories as well 
but left podiums, two poles, and four fastest laps. Now we have Lana Norris in P4, 184 points, three victories, five podiums, two poles, and a fastest lap. Pedro Oscar Piastri, 171 points, and P5, two victories, five podiums, two pole positions, and a fastest lap. And we have George Russell finally getting onto the podium once again in the season after such a great start. It seemed like it was just a mistake after mistake, uh, some kind of a snowball effect. Uh, fortunately for Russell, he managed to get out of it and score a podium in the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Uh, the only driver to score points in this uh, in this race, let's, be, let's say like that, unfortunately, for Hamilton. Uh, P7 now for Jacob Perez, faxes a victory in Baku, 146 points, a victory now, and four podiums. Yeah, the gap is now less than half. Like uh, Max now doesn't have uh, more than half a point of Perez, but it is still a, a horrible gap and just a yeah, does not good. Carlos Sainz in P8 now dropping one place to yeah, two P8, twelve points on the board and 146, uh, 145 from the entire season so far. One victory, five podiums, and a pole position. Then we have Lewis Hamilton in P9. 122 points, very unfortunate sequence of uh, sequence of races, basically. Uh, Lewis wasn't very lucky this season, let's say like that. Uh, zero victories and a podium. Last show in P10, finally beating that 69-point curse, I guess, that he had 69 points for like five races in a row. Finally scoring points, now on 77 and two podiums to his name. And Zuki Snowda in P11 on 52 points. Uh, yeah, scoring points over Alpine, 24 points for Gatley in P12, and Ocon in P13 for uh, 23. Then it's Alex Albon in P14 on 19 points and a podium. Logan Sargent now in P15. Uh, yeah, P4, uh, sorry, P15, 14 points, only 5 points behind his teammate. Uh, one more crazy race, and Logan Sargent could be outscoring his uh, Williams teammate, which is uh, interesting, to say the least. Uh, sorry if, uh, if I'm Bumping into my mic, I, I, don't know, I, I really have to have it close to to me so it, I sound all right. Uh, if there's any wrongdoings in audio, uh, apologies from the, for that. Yeah, uh, Ricardo MP sixteen Titan points with Logan Sargent, but Sargent uh, with that P five is just ahead of Ricardo. Thanks to count back P seventeen for Valtteri Bottas scoring at one point, uh, five points now for the Sauber team and for him. Uh, yeah, it's really difficult to score points in the bottom two teams, and this could be the the the, the final nail in the coffin for the Haas team for being P10 constructors, basically. Because I I really don't see them any of the uh, any of those two teams scoring any more points in the the last whatever races, um, unless another chaos like this race happens. But it, it's not very very likely. Let's say like that. And Olkenberg in P18, three points, and Joe and Magnussen need to score points still in the season. P19 and P20. Yeah, let's say uh, let's see the constructors championship as we have Red Bull lead, still leading the way, and now by a, a huge margin over McLaren on 424 points, four victories, 15 podiums, seven poles, and nine fastest laps. McLaren scoreless form this race, 355 points, 5 victories, 10 podiums, 4 poles, and 2 fastest laps. We have Ferrari closing in on the McLaren by a significant margin, even though Ferrari had a very, very unfortunate race due to the chaos that occurred. 347 points, 4 victories, 9 podiums, 3 poles, and 4 fastest laps. Then is Mercedes uh, jumping Aston Martin in the constructors. Uh, despite Mercedes looking very, very mediocre in the last whatever eight races uh, as a car there's still before in the constructors uh i mean they have probably wonders by their driver lineup for, uh one victory and eight podiums for mercedes so far then it's aston martin mp5 279 points three victories eight podiums three poles and two fastest laps uh yeah i, I mean those four teams behind the red bull i think they changed place like uh they pretty much were at every single spot throughout the season. I, I'm pretty sure Aston Martin were second at some point and now are in P5. And we can say the same for McLaren, Ferrari, and Mercedes. So yeah, it's uh, interesting. Uh, Racing Bulls team, final scoring 
more points now. Uh, well, they were P6 before. 66 points for them. P7 for Alpine. Uh, the gap to Racing Wolves is getting bigger. Uh, 47 points for them. Williams, though, 33 points in P8 now on the podium. Uh, yeah, finally good travel item, perhaps, with Sargent being a capable driver right now uh, from the simulation, which is uh, very exciting to see, obviously. I didn't get him, him very good stats, but it looks like uh, Zuri just improving somehow despite simulation being based on pretty much last season, let's say like that. Uh, Sauber P9, 5 points, and has in that last full far and 3 points. Yeah. Next up is the Singapore Grand Prix, which I mentioned already is going to have some weather forecast for it. Uh, and yeah, if it rains in Singapore, it just pours. It yeah, it's gonna be a lot of rain. If it if it does rain, obviously, uh, there's no guarantee so far. Uh, it's also the last race before the next recap and the second last recap. Well, recap as uh, after sequence of six races which this is going to be the last one basically as there's going to be a recap of the full season after the final race of the season in abu dhabi but this one yeah this one is the 18th uh 18th round of the of the championship so yeah we're getting towards the end of the season uh deliveries are getting announced uh, the winter testing is like two weeks away so it's all coming together uh and a good Good to be a full fan right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below what do you want to see from my content. And as always, uh, take care of yourself and see you.